Okay. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the latest JFrog webinar. Uh, my name is Paul Garden. Um, I have the privilege of working in the security team here at JFrog. And I am joined today by a colleague of mine, Asaf Balkan, who's the director of product management in, in the security team. Um, we're going to be talking to you today about JFrog curation, which we recently announced. And JFrog curation enables you to seamlessly curate software packages entering your organization. Okay. So topics for today's session are, you know, fundamentally, what, what is the problem that we're solving? Where, why are we doing this? Uh, why is it happening? Um, for those of you who are wondering what, you know, what does curation actually mean? Um, it's important to set that uh, at the beginning. And then what's the scale of the problem? I'm sure many of you are very familiar with um, uh, open source packages and the potential threats that they can bring into your organization, but we're gonna look at the scale that this, pro this uh, problem really does have. We're gonna talk about how JFrog cur curation can actually power your foundation for your DevSecOps process or your software development lifecycle. We'll cover some of the capabilities of JFrog curation. And then I will hand over to um, Asaf, who will do you um, a live demo so you can see J4 curation in action. And then we'll follow up that at the end for a Q&A. So if you have any questions, um, if you can put that into the Q&A um, se section, I think there's a, there's a window, there's a Q&A window somewhere, find that and put your question in, and then we'll get to those questions at the end. Okay. So what is the problem we're solving? And I think this is very nicely summed up by a quote from a, a CTO or a CISO from a Fortune 100 company. And he says, and I quote, I don't have any visibility control over whatever's going on with the third party open source libraries coming inside my company. And I am faced with two bad options. Number one, let the development team continue doing what they want. Or number two, place restrictions and slow the company velocity. As I'm sure many of you are, are aware, um, companies are driving to get new versions of software out as quickly as possible, upgraded versions, bug fixes, new features, all those kinds of things. That drives developers to use a lot of open source. It's much quicker and much simpler for developers to include open source uh, libraries, to make um, software development quicker. Why reinvent the wheel if someone's already done it? So they rely heavily on open source packages, dependencies, and libraries. So this problem is pretty big because sometimes a typical application um, can be as much as 80 or 90% open source libraries and open source components. That's huge, that's a lot. So while on one hand, that's excellent for time to market, and it makes for coding to be much quicker. It does present a potential risk to the organization because unless you're looking at these very carefully and what you're bringing into the organization, you can be bringing in unintended exposures, which can be in, in multiple different kinds of forms. So on one hand, you wanna keep development fast, you want to have control and visibility, but you don't want to slow things down. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So what does curation mean? So I thought I would pull up um, the English Oxford Dictionary. Um, what is curation? It's a noun. The action or process of selecting, organizing, and looking after the items in a collection or exhibition. So essentially, the way that maps to the JFrog world is... How you select these packages is via the policies that we have, and we'll talk about those later. We organize the packages coming in using Artifactory. That's your artifact and your binary lifecycle manager. Um, and then the repository is where you actually keep uh, the packages. So that's how curation directly maps to the JFrog world. So in essence, we do exactly what the meaning of curation does for your open source packages in your software development lifecycle. Okay. So the scale of the problem, I've already mentioned that up to 90% of a typical application might be open source packages, dependencies, and then 
their dependencies as well. So when you take a look, and, and we did some research earlier in the year, and this is just one month of data. So we looked at five of the most popular open source, public open source repositories that are used by millions of developers every day. And just in one month, you've got tens of thousands of new packages being added to these repositories every day. So there are new packages coming. And then when you look at the number of new versions, there's hundreds of thousands of new versions. And how on earth can um, each developer keep track of, well, is this version safe? Is this version not safe? This is new. Should I be using it? Should I not be using it? I need it because it's got a library that um, I need to get my application done. So it's very difficult to expect a developer or even a security team to be able to do all of this analysis and figure out whether the open source package is fine to use or whether there's a problem with it or whether am I bringing a potential exposure into my organization. So the idea of JFrog curation is to take this headache away from developers and have them focusing on what they care about, which is just writing code. Okay, so today, kind of the problem is the developer is sitting away, they're very busy, and they're just pulling packages from different uh, repositories, whether it's Maven, Python, um, Go, or NuGet. And then, unfortunately, they're completely unaware that they're bringing in packages that may have security or integrity problems. So they're bringing potential risks into the software supply chain. And these can be you know, a multitude of different kinds of things, but we're focused around, it could be malicious packages. You don't really wanna be bringing those in, not especially not into your production environment. Um, there could be high severity CVEs or critical severity CVEs, which is gonna cause you a, a headache and remediation later in the software development life cycle. Uh, there's something that we term operational risk, which would be packages that are maybe very old and they're unmaintained and they pose a potential risk or a, an operational risk, or maybe they're very young or immature, or just a traditional, you know, a license compliance issue. So maybe you don't want LGPL licenses in, in the organization, or you don't want uh, unknown license types. So all of this can be happening unbeknownst to the developer. They're just looking to get coding. They want to speed up the software development lifecycle. So this, this kind of is the problem that we're looking to solve, stopping these unintended risks coming into the organization, not even letting them come into the organization. So the questions that we want to ask, and this is the questions that the functionality of curation do, is, is the package malicious? We've got an amazing security team here at JFrog. We've got an unprecedent, unprecedented um, malicious package database that we check against. So the first thing you can do is eliminate malicious packages. That's huge. The second, like I said, would be the license compliance. Legal teams have your guidelines. They say, we don't want any of these kinds of packages or those kinds of packages. So you can eliminate packages of a certain type of license. So they don't even get into your um, production code. Then, you know, very familiar with everybody will be uh, vulnerabilities. You can elect to keep out things that have got maybe critical or very high severity CVEs. So you don't even bring those into the organization. You can find a newer version of that package that's maybe um, not, not uh, vulnerable. So that's another thing that we can look for. And, and finally, like I just mentioned, is kind of more the, the maintenance issues with a package. Maybe it's brand new, it's not been tried, so you can keep those ones out. Or maybe it's, it's very old and you wanna avoid something that hasn't been maintained for a very long time. So those are the questions that you can ask with curation and that's what it does. And it sits in the background and does that for you. But let's, let's get into how we do that. So we want to power your foundation of your DevSecOps process or your software development lifecycle. So essentially what we're doing with curation is blocking security risks from entering your organization. So it doesn't, these packages are not even coming into your organization. So um, we don't actually download the package and do the scan. 
we actually look at the metadata for the package that the developer is looking to use, and we compare that against the policies. So we don't even pull the package into your organization unless it meets the policy requirements that you've already set up. So we're policing the packages before they get into your organization. So that's what we feel sets you up with a powerful foundation for your software development process. So now when your developers are coding and they're pulling things from the, the Maven repository and the NPM repository, they know that all these packages are trusted so they can just get on with their coding. They don't have to worry about fixing CVEs or is it a malicious package? Is it the right license type? So this can accelerate the software development process, which everybody wants to do. No one wants to be hanging around, waiting for uh, remediation to be done and fixes to be done or uh, sorting out this is the wrong kind of license type for our environment. So this sets you up with a great foundation for expedient coding. And then consequently, when you get into the build phase and release, there's gonna be less remediation. Maybe you don't have to tie up your security team so much and the DevOps team will like this or your release management team, it's gonna enable there to be a much faster delivery and it will make for a much smoother and quicker process rather than doing things later in the software development life cycle, you're doing them right at the beginning before they even get into your organization, which is saves on time and it saves on money. It's much more expensive to fix something if you're in the build or the release stage if you can do it before you've, you've even started coding. You eliminate those risks very, very early on in your software development lifecycle. So let's look at some of the features of uh, JFrog Curation. So we have a set of policy templates that you can pick from and configure. And the, you know, like I've said already, we cover malicious packages, operational risk, um, critical vulnerabilities and license compliance. So they're pre-configured in the UI and Asaf, when he does the demonstration, will be able to talk you through how, and you'll see exactly how to set those up. It's very easy. It's got a, a very simple to use user interface. Now, something that we allow inside your policies is called a package waiver. Now, what that means is if, for example, there's a reason why a development team might, might want a high or a critical vulnerability uh, package to come through because maybe the new version isn't available, but they know they're not going to take this module or this small development to production. But if they don't get that package, it's going to hold back the development. So you can set up policy waivers. So there are exception scenarios you can set up inside a policy to say, hey, block all these kinds of packages except this one, and you can put the package name. And Asaf will also show you how we can do that. Now, the one thing that a lot of people want uh, today, and a lot of customers have been asking us for this solution for nearly two years. So we've listened very carefully to what these developers, uh, what the management want, what developers want, what DevOps people want, what the security teams want. And one of the things is to have a complete audit trail of everything that comes into the organization. So rather than things just appearing and then just going into a repository, there's like a funnel where everything comes through curation and you can see everything that was approved or it was blocked. So this is great for compliance. So if you're in a highly regulated environment uh, or industry, this is great because it gives you an audit trail of everything that's come in and been accepted or come in and been blocked. So, so this gives you complete traceability. And coupled with the rest of the JFrog platform, you get the traceability from curation all the way through your software development lifecycle out to production. So when there is an exception or a blocked package, you can set up email notifications and you can have specific team members notified. Maybe there's someone on the compliance team for a license one. Maybe there's someone in the security team or the AppSec team for um, critical vulnerabilities and malicious packages. So you can set that up. So when you do get a package that's been blocked, everyone gets notified and you'll see why it failed this specific policy. So everyone will understand what's happened. Um, thinking more about building for the developer and having a seamless and frictionless experience for developers, 
We have support for curation in our CLI tool. That's our command line tool. So you can do things like an NPM install and, and it all works through the, the command line interface. Um, I believe that Asaf will show you how that works in the demo. And if you're using the JFrog platform, you've got seamless integration with curation. It, it, it's almost transparent. It sits in the background with its automated policies, looking for packages that don't meet these policy requirements. And it's completely seamless. So the developer doesn't even know it's happening in the background. Whenever he's fetching or pulling different um, libraries or packages or components, the comparison of the metadata of that package against the policy happens in fractions of a second. So it happens so quickly that if it's approved, Artifactory just goes out and pulls the package into the um, environment. Now we have an amazing catalog. It's a database service that sits in the background. And this is where the magic happens, where all the metadata is stored for all of those packages. So we keep track of all of the new packages, the new versions. So it's an active database that's always updated to keep track of all those changes. So your policies will always be matching you know, the latest packages coming into the organization. So it's available now. We announced the product two weeks ago, and it's available as you know, a topo whichever topology you want, self-hosted. Uh, we've got multiple cloud vendors that uh, uh, we support. You can also have multi-cloud or a hybrid topology. So it's very flexible to work within your DevOps ecosystem and your tech stack that you have. Okay, so having kind of covered all of that, once you do have curation in place and you kind of, it sits between Artifactory and um, the outside world and these um, upstream um, public repositories, what does it bring you? So it, it's gonna give you that centralized visibility and control of all of those packages coming in with the audit trail, with the um, automation of the policies. It always happens in the background. And then the, your developers will always know that they've got a trusted source of software components for their development. So it's frictionless in that it happens in the background, the developer, whether you're using the CLI tool or you're in the user interface, pulling packages in or setting things up, it proactively blocks the malicious and unwanted packages in the background. You don't even know it's happening. And all in all, all of this brings an improved DevOps, DevSecOps experience and it realizes cost savings. It saves time for the developers not, not fixing things while they're doing their coding. It also means that you limit some of the remediation that happens later on in the software development lifecycle. So it's kind of a frictionless operation that happens in the background to streamline uh, keeping some of these you know, potential risks and exposures out of your organization at the earliest possible stage. Okay. So how does this fit with the rest of the software supply chain that JFrog has? So you'll see on the left, curation takes care of managing and monitoring the public upstream repositories on the left-hand side. And then you come into the, the main artifactory, the build, the release, the distribute phases of your software development lifecycle. So uh, we do have other security products, JFrog X-Ray, which is our SCA tool and our advanced security package which takes care of secrets detection and um, services exposures and things like that. So here, here's a, a reason why you would want curation and X-ray is maybe on day one, when a package comes in through curation, it's not a known, it doesn't have a known CVE, but on day three or day four, so think about uh, you know when Log4j was um, released, on the Thursday, no one knew. And then on the Friday, suddenly everyone was in a panic. So this is where X-Ray can pick up uh, through software composition analysis, um, anything that maybe on day one was okay. And on day five, it's not. So they work kind of hand in hand. You've got curation being the security guard on the gate at the front. And then X-Ray is being the security guy throughout your software development process out of production. So. That's in a nutshell how it all fits together in the platform. And now I'm going to hand over to Asaf because it's time for the demo so you can see this all in action.
Let me stop sharing. Okay. Hey, so hi everybody. And great to be here. So can you hear me? Everyone? Yeah. Okay, excellent. So let me share my screen. Thank you, Paul, for the introduction. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, okay, excellent. Okay, so let's start with a kind of a walk through an experience from a developer perspective and then a curation admin perspective, what curation is. And we will start uh, with the most important person probably, which is the developer. So now uh, as a developer, um, I'm, I want to uh, install an NPM uh, project. In, in that case, uh, what I'll do is I will try to build um, I will try to build uh, only one package in that case uh, called CourseJS and try to install it and doing an NPM install. And it was installed. Everything is okay. Like I'm, I'm being able to install it and, and it looks great. And uh, the one problem is, is that NPM JS is a malicious package. But still, as a developer, I don't know that. Uh, so now when we uh, deploy Croatian uh, at the gate of the company, uh, let me just show you how it works from an architecture perspective. So in general, uh, I am as a developer, I am interacting with a, a machine, and this is this is the name of the machine. And uh, in front of that machine, now there is a reference that I will show you in a second how simple it is to set it up. But in general, it's just a URL uh, from this artifact we're saying don't go directly to npm.js to bring the packages, rather, uh, I want you to go through another artifactory, uh, which has a duration protection on top of that. And this is the second machine it, uh, with the full seven at the end. So as a developer, what I did right now is just uh, I, I went directly through duration and then to NPMJS and everything works okay, uh, which means uh, it's not the behavior we want to have. Going to the duration uh, web application, I have a place I can put policies. This is where I will put uh, blocking policies in front of the company. And in, in here, I want to add one called the uh, block malicious packages uh, for all the organization. And then uh, I will put it on top of all the repositories I'm protecting in the company. And then I have out of the box conditions. Uh, this is where I have a uh, block malicious packages or CVSS or license aspect or maybe immature packages that are immature, that are in the operational uh, side of the house. And we will do the malicious packages block. And I don't want to waive anyone at this point. And I want this to be a blocking uh, a blocking decision. And then I'm saving that. That's pretty much it from a curation admin perspective. Now, going back to the developer, now the developer would like to do this again. Uh, in order to do this, we would just need to uh, we will need to clean up the cache, so we will not use the things that I have been already downloaded. Uh, I will remove the node modules as well. Okay, so I think that we are good to go. Uh, we will also remove the one additional file, which is the package. Okay, now we are good to go and we will try to install uh, uh, again. And now what we are seeing is the full three forbidden. This is because we have been blocked. So the package was not downloaded. As a curation admin, uh, if I go right now to the audit, and this is the central audit of the company, I will see that there was a block indeed of a course JS package. Uh, I see which developer asked for it and from which exact uh, server. In that case, it was the internal server and uh, from specific repository. And then I can uh, even have a look on the recommendation coming from uh, J4 Research saying, you need to remove this package. It's a malicious package. And so that, that's kind of the behavior we wish to have, right? And as a developer from an experience perspective, uh, that's that's kind of a simple task because this is just one package, but I want to show you something that is a bit more realistic. 
And what I want to do right now is I want to uh, build something that is a bit more complex. And this is uh, something, a package called VMP that has a lot of transitive dependencies as well. And so if I will do an NPM install in here, try to do that and go through curation, uh, I am failing all over again. Uh, but as a developer, I want to understand exactly what is going on, right? Because this is not actionable. It's not informative enough. So we have built something uh, called the J4 curation, now adding this to our developer. If I J4 curation audit, I will get an assessment of what exactly is going on. And uh, let me let me do this in a bit bigger screen. So what you see in front of you is that as a developer right now, I know that I was blocked trying to get this package, but I see that there are two two policies that blocked me. One is because this is has a CVSS score of nine and above, with or without a fix. And what I can see is that there are multiple CVs for this package that caused me to be blocked. And there is a recommendation coming from the system saying what are the different uh, package version I can use in order to fix some of the CVs. By the way, I can also say that uh, there, there is some that cannot be fixed. Okay, and there is another uh, policy that this package violates, which is this package is aged, but there is a newer version, and the version is a 3.9.19. So what I want to do right now as a developer, uh, let me... We... I think we may have lost you a little bit, Asaf. At least I have. We, we lost. We lost your audio. I don't and know. The audio. That, we lost your audio. Yes, for maybe a minute. Now and now it's back. Now it's no, back it's again, bad. it's okay. Okay, so I'm right now I'm trying to fix uh, to fix the, the package that I'm using based on the recommendation. Um, so let me just do that. And, okay, now I will try to reinstall and see if, if really it, it, uh, from a developer, it, uh, everything works okay. Trying to... Uh, install the package again, doing npm install, and I'm failing. So I'm running um, the npm, I'm running the JFOC uh, curation audit once more. And what I see, just a second, let me just make sure that I'm um, removing the package, um, the cache, and all of that, just a second. Okay, so now I see that I still have one additional issue. I have a CV, I, I have the package being blocked because of the CVSS. Uh, in that case, there are two CVs that cannot be resolved. There is no version that fixed it. Uh, just to make sure that we are correct, I will go to uh, to the VM, to the, uh, to the key, to see this in, in uh, NPMJS. And I see that this version uh, in, in the version that I did is truly is the latest. Uh, and if I open the GitHub of that, uh, what I'll see is uh, I'll go to the security side, and then I see that there are two critical severities that are above nine. Let me open one of them. As an example, this is one of them. And I do see that there is no workaround, as you can see from here. So those are truly, it's a, it's a package that cannot be resolved uh, using an upgrade. The operation was correct in that regard. Uh, by the way, if I will go in here and I will look for uh, for the VM2, I will see that there is, uh, as you can see, there are two CVEs. I see the same exact information as the developer, and there is no fix. So most likely in that case, the developer will ask the curation admin to give it a waiver because they need to complete the project. Uh, so assume uh, the curation admin see that there is no solution to the problem. They will go 
to the specific policy and go to waiver and says, okay, I need to waive the specific uh, version. So you go to here and says, okay, let me go to VM2. And I want to waive all the versions because I know that there is uh, no upgrade exists for that. So I will say no upgrade and then save it, save the policy. And that's pretty much it. And now as a developer, I'm getting a notification that everything should work. And so I'm trying to install it once more and everything works. I'm getting the packages and everything works pretty completely 100% for me. And I can also, if I want to, I can run the J4 command line just to see that there are no blocks and it says that there are zero blocks. So as a developer, I'm good to go. Uh, one additional thing to make the developer experience uh, perfect is we are also uh, could notify the developer uh, with the thing that have been wrong. So in that case, uh, we are setting the system to send emails. In that case, uh, this is the version that we tried to download earlier. And the developer is getting a, an email with everything that you saw in the command line, all the CVEs and the recommendation of all the fixes that should be used and all of that. And everything could be used uh, ju just by looking at the email. But uh, the command line might be a better solution for developer. It might be a bit more friendly in that regard, uh, but that's available as well. Uh, so going back to, uh, to curation, um, just mention is that uh, out of the box, once it's installed, we have a central visibility across the company, across all the JPTs going through curation about downloads, about blocks, about who asked for that. I can slice and dice this by the project, by the internal remotes. I can do all of that. Um, and setting, in, setting this up, let me just show you how easy it is. So I'm going, in that case, I'm going into the internal uh, artifactory server. And in here, I have one remote that is used to go directly to NPM JS. The only change I did is just refer this to the internal, uh, to the external uh, server with creation, just giving it the URL. And that's pretty much it. And uh, marking that I want the developer context to be sent to creation. So that's another kind of another toggle that we added uh, using our technology. That's pretty much it, done. Like once we do that, the developer is not even aware because we didn't change anything to the developer. The developer used to work with a certain artifactory. They keep on using the same exact one. Only in that case, the same artifactory will go through another one with curation. And so that's pretty much uh, what curation is. Uh, the central gate, the central visibility with the ability to trace uh, everything that happened based on uh, blocking or the project or anything we want to know, adding policies. Uh, one additional thing we introduce is the ability to run policies in a dry run mode. Rather, we don't want to block, but we want to test this for a while. And if we are doing this in a dry run, we can go to a dedicated visibility and looking on packages that violate a specific policy, although it was not blocked, but still there is a, a vulnerability, there is a violation. So we can look at it from here as well. And this could be used to train the system to get, uh, this is something we did in uh, JFrog, uh, to be more confident on, on the level of noise and attention we will need to give uh, the security guys and the developers. So we train the system, we put it in dry run for a while, uh, do the analysis and then uh, moved it from a dry run to a blocking mode. So that's something that could uh, also be used for that purpose. Um, and I think that this is pretty much it. Uh, one additional thing we can see in curation settings is we can see all the repositories that are being protected in, in this demo system, it's only one. And what we can see is all the policies applied to it. So we can see the level of security uh, each of the repositories are getting. So that's a very nice way of knowing how, protect, how protected each of the remotes. Uh, additional thing we can see, by the way, from another angle, if we'll go to a policy, so we can say, okay, can, can uh, you please show me this specific policy? Uh, what are the remotes that are being protected by that? And in that case, we can also see 
for each specific policy, the level of protection, the level of coverage in the company. So that's another angle we have. And so that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I think that I covered uh, mostly what we are doing. Uh, one additional note to say is uh, there have been some questions in here about the connection and relation between X-ray to curation. And so one of the things that is important for us to know is that X-ray uh, is needs to be in the development life cycle. It needs to protect the builds. It needs to protect the promotion when we are staging into production. This is where we need to do the SA. Also, we can do this on, on the code level, but it is very important to cover things during the life cycle as well, because not all of the things could be handled in the gate. Some of them will need to be waived. Some of the packages we will allow today through the gate uh, going into the different life cycle, we will still, those will might st uh, need to uh, be protected because they might change their uh, security grade. For example, they might become malicious uh, after a while because uh, we will identify those as such. Or most likely a uh, reason would be is that we will find a new CV applied to them. And then they are already being used in the life cycle to provide a service or whatever it is. X-ray will be the service uh, to look into that and be able to maybe block the, the promotion or block the download across the different uh, life cycles. So those two uh, products are completely complementary. Uh, the just uh, JFOG Advanced Security will allow you to see applicability of specific CVEs uh, across the life cycle. So if something is still in the life cycle, uh, we need the first party code for the context. This is where we can tell you if the CV is applicable to a certain service, yes or no. Uh, so curation is at the left. This is where it's the first line of defense. This is where we shift everything as possible to the left to reduce the level of CVEs across the life cycle. But you still need to protect those across uh, definitely first party code uh, uh, protection that uh, is needed in the SCA side. Um, um, thank you for that, Asaf. And it, I just had a quick look in the uh, the Q and A session, and we've got lots of questions. It looks like you answered six of them, so thanks for doing that. That was while I was presenting. Um, but there's a few more. Should we uh, walk through these and see if we can get them answered? Um, sure. Uh, Daniel asks, can I manage policies or, or waivers in a product by product basis, meaning different products that pull dependencies and may have different criteria like licenses that may apply? So the answer is currently in this version, still not. We are uh, working on extending the waiver management module to do exactly that. And the reason we can do that is because when a uh, question is getting a request for a download, we get the context of everything. We get the context of the user, the context of the repository is coming from, uh, the virtual, the JPOC project, and we can use those, uh, the, we can use this context in order to provide waiver based on the origin, based on the origin of the requester. And that might reflect, this is what we see with customers we are working with. That's exactly the way uh, to manage this in scale and, and to be able to manage the waivers with context of application or project or business units. Uh, so this is something we are working on adding and it will be available uh, rather shortly. Okay. Uh, next question ag again from Daniel. How does this handle issues that arise after a package enters the organization, like a package that was okay when first used, but now a high CVE item has been discovered in it? So I can answer that. That's where you would have um, JFrog X-Ray, and I think I touched that on that a little bit earlier. This is where you'd have um, X-Ray, which is your software composition analysis solution. So if something on day one comes through uh, the curation gate, and into the organization, but it's then deemed to be a high CVE item. As long as you have that policy set up in, in X-Ray, your software composition analysis solution, um, X-Ray would pick that up and it would uh, flag that as um, um, uh, you know, a high severity package that you guys would need to address. Okay. Yeah, and I, I will also add to that, Paul, thanks for that, is that 
Uh, we are working on use cases when uh, X-ray incubation, since this is one platform, uh, will be aware of each other, and then X-ray will be able to say, okay, this is something that uh, was meant to be blocked at the gate. I see that, and I see a package that is in the life cycle with this violation, or that violates a specific policy from the gate. I might want to do something uh, across the life cycle, like for example, failing the build. And uh, so this those cross user stories and end to end life cycle user stories between X ray and creation, uh, you should expect to see uh, uh, those more and more as we are moving forward and progressing with the development of the platform. That's great. Um, next question is from Mitesh. Are there any reporting slash notification if a policy rejects any packaged downloads? So yes, um, there's uh, the audit trail will show you if um, a package has been rejected and it doesn't download. And also um, there will be an email like Asaf showed earlier. So the email can be set up to go to uh, just the developer, or you can have it go to specific people. It could be DevOps, it could be your AppSec team or SecOps. Um, so yes, if some something does get rejected, there's uh, an audit trail in the in the UI, and there's also um, there's a notification that goes out to the team as well. Yeah, and th there is one additional thing in the level of the policy as well. Uh, we can add notifications specifically for a specific policy to a certain emails as well. Uh, so that's available as well already, and we are working on adding integration to external notification system uh, in case of such events, uh, systems like Slack and Teams and others using webhooks. Uh, all of that is work in progress for us to make all the notification uh, much more uh, flexible. Uh, so those things uh, should, should be expected as well. Okay. Uh, one additional thing is working on reports. Uh, that will be manual reports to PDF. We got those, uh, this as a requirement for me few uh, already so it will be added later on currently it's not available in this version okay uh next question from brian is is pypy as well as conda supported so i know pypy will be but um i'm not sure the answer on conda so pypy is supported already in this version it is available conda it's in the roadmap um, and it will be okay uh, next question from Jordan. Are there any plans to support Anaconda? I'm assuming curation occurs as part of or on top of package repository mirroring. Uh, so we are not working on uh, mirroring. Rather, we are working on uh, specific public repos with, uh, with the source included as part of our evaluation. Uh, we could look on uh, mirroring. This is something that uh, we are looking on uh, to be able to add those, so it depends on which one, but Anaconda is, is definitely part of uh, the plans uh, for us to add. Okay. Um, someone uh, anonymous says, what is the difference regarding license compliance versus x-ray? Well, um, the difference really is the, you know, you're doing the license compliance and curation right at the entrance of your um, organization and your software development lifecycle, whereas X-Ray is looking across builds, repositories, release bundles, all the way through the rest of your software development lifecycle. So you can have curation and X-Ray looking for the same kind of license compliance uh, policies. They're just doing it at, at slightly different places in the SDLC. Correct. And, and one of the things that, that we have learned uh, from being in this business for a while, I will add, is that li license is a great example when you want to prevent something from coming in because the the recommendation when we will see a license that is uh, is not approved, uh, if we will see this in the life cycle or if we will see this uh, even before, the recommendation will be to replace it. There is no way to remediate or to fix it. The only fix available is to replace and use an alternative. And and this is a very good incentive for us to do this much earlier than detecting this at the life cycle, just because if a developer time already spent on developing something with package with a license that is not allowed, and we will catch it hours, maybe days, in, in some cases even 
weeks of work, uh, this work will, will be wasted and a lot of frustration will come into place and a waste of time and business velocity. So shifting left in license case is a very clear incentive. Uh, the same goes to many other cases when we don't have a newer version and we need to replace. Any time we need to replace, prevention is so much better than detection, uh, velocity and cost-wise. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the next question, I think this, the, when the time that this was asked was before you did your demo. So I think this question may have been answered. And it says, what is the user experience for block packages, 404 errors, et cetera? And I think you kind of um, covered that. And uh, he is also asking uh, when a developer is attempting to get an emergency patch built out. And I think you kind of covered that with the policy exception that you can have a waiver. So you can have an exception for something that you need to get development done on time. So I'm going to keep going through these quickly because we've got a ton of questions. <laughs> this is Matthew. What is the licensing model? We have Enterprise Plus and we are investing in advanced security. Um, yes, you can absolutely buy this um, with Enterprise Plus. It's um, an add-on um, fee. You can see the details of that on the pricing page on the JFrog website or alternatively have a conversation with your account manager. Um, a JFrog, and they can give you all of the details about how uh, the licensing model works. Uh, next one is from Kevin. How are packages determined to be malicious? I'm worried about false positives. Excellent. So, so first of all, let, let me share with you something that is uh, critical. I don't think that I've mentioned this in here. I mentioned this in the answers, but uh, one of the questions being asked a lot is, uh, why didn't we implement this using X-Ray everything, including blocking malicious and all of that? And the main reason was developer experience. And, and what, what we saw is, is that if, if we need to download the package in order to assess that, from a developer experience, when a developer might want to assess hundreds of transitive packages in a matter of seconds, it could not be done using technologies that are blocking the developer and, and needs to download and then store and then scan. Uh, for a developer experience, it will, it will most likely the default will be you, you are failing, even if everything is okay and you will just be notified this afterwards. Uh, and so this is why uh, when we came and implemented curation, we build this based on a technology that doesn't need to download the file in order to know if the file is okay or not. The way that it's being done, is we have an infrastructure built in JFrog across the globe that scan all those uh, packages uh, in advance, all those open source packages. And when we scan those, we are running a dedicated malicious package scanners that have been built by our uh, research uh, group. We have a research group that I, I encourage you, everyone, to go and look on, on the blog, on the website, uh, what kind of a research group we have in here. This is like, top-notch uh, leading group of researchers that have been building these uh, uh, malicious package scanners. And the way that we uh, we do that, or the, way, the, the things that they are looking into the open source packages in order to conclude if those are malicious or not, uh, those are based on, on what they are familiar with as malicious behavior. For example, connecting to a CNC, trying to communicate, trying to send uh, using a covert a channel to send something outside of the company, um, uh, trying to invoke other processes, anything that uh, even obfuscation is an indication of an open source uh, to potentially be malicious. And so being uh, a lot of the researcher being hackers in their background knows exactly what is it they need to look inside those packages. And this is what we do continuously. And once there is a package being notified by the research as malicious, potentially by the scanners, it will be identified and the identity will be attached to the package information that curation will get uh, continuously. And it will be updated continuously and we will know this. And then the blocking could happen in a matter of milliseconds based on the property of malicious coming from uh, our infrastructure. So that's kind of a end-to-end -end story with the malicious and, and the developer experience that yeah. we guarantee in here. 
Yeah, Asaf and I have the privilege of working with a world-class security research team. So we have the benefit of them curating our malicious package database and enhancing our CVE database with amazing information. Okay, next question. We've still got a lot to get through, Asaf. We've got to keep the answers kind of short. Um, can, you sure. configure, can you configure custom policies or are you limited to using the predefined ones? So currently it's only predefined. We are opening right now some of them uh, for uh, parameters. So for example, blocking a specific package uh, defined by the customer, blocking a specific CVE, uh, blocking a specific list of uh, licenses. All of that will be available uh, shortly as part of customizable condition. And we are getting requests to add condition. Those will be added into the library uh, we want to make sure that those are uh, correct research lab and, and uh, that those are correct to be done in the SCA. And then we can ensure not only performance, but also readability and recommendation and all of that in, in a consistent framework. Moving forward, we do consider opening this more to cust completely customized condition. Right now, uh, it's not available, but it is in the roadmap. Right. Um, is there a plugin API to allow augmenting policy decisions with data from additional data sources external to JFrog? Uh, so this is this is definitely something we are working on the design of that. So it will be available later on. Um, so you should you should expect this. It's not it's not available today. Okay. This is definitely something we are working on uh, the design of that. Okay. Uh, next question from Matthew: Is the curation blocking message customizable? Uh, no, at the moment it's not. We have such a requirement already in place. Uh, so this is something that we have in, in Jira, uh, okay. not available right now. Okay. Um, someone from Anonymous, what are the privileges needed to configure curation, add policies, and view results? So I'm guessing that's a platform privilege. Is there a yeah, this is the admin or... It's not an admin, uh, it is a policy manager permission in the platform that uh, needs to be given. And then you can change uh, the operation uh, policy. Okay. Are there plans to integrate with, with package manager clients to expose the curation context to the developer so they don't need to interface with JFrog whenever they see a 403? Yes, definitely. Uh, so we have like plans on doing two things. First of all, integrate this capability into the ID. But the second is to be able to uh, augment, not, not through the out-of-the-box package managers as is, rather using JFrog uh, to build the, uh, the package. And once you build this using the JFrog command line, you will get the same uh, indication we showed in the creation audit as, as a one command. So if I'm doing JFrog npm install, I will get the NPM installed. And if something goes wrong, uh, I will be able to get all the results of the curation audit and all of that in one command. And uh, so that's something that we can, uh, uh, that, to, uh, that we will integrate. Uh, we don't intend to change, uh, to provide versions of the package managers as is to support curation or anything like it, like to fork it or something like that. This is not something uh, that we plan on doing. Okay. Um, we've got 10 questions in five minutes. <laughs> okay. How do you develop, how are developers informed once the upgrade available? I don't know. I'm assuming is that a package upgrade? I'm not really sure what that means. Yeah, I, I believe the question was, is if there is no upgrade available at the moment and, and I'm okay. being blocked, will I get a notification for that? Uh, currently, no, we don't support that. But that's a great idea, and I'm adding this to my uh, my Jira is something that we will be able to notify because right. we are getting the platform is getting those updates. Excellent. Um, is curation exposed via an API? We have automated processes for managing exceptions. Could the addition of a waiver be added programmatically? So it will be the waiver management module extension we are working on right now includes API for waiver a waiver request and API to waiver approval from external system like ServiceNow. Uh, so you will be able to ask for a waiver and to approve a waiver uh, through an API. All of that 
uh, will be based on APIs. Excellent. Um, Chris asks, is this another SKU on top of Artifactory in the X-ray license? Um, yes, it is. Um, if you have an enterprise level um, um, license uh, subscription, uh, you can add curation on top of that. And you can find details on the, the pricing page, or if you are an existing customer, you can um, maybe get in touch with your uh, account manager directly. Uh, next one is Gail. What release of Artifactory includes curation? So the most recent release of the, the JFrog platform includes curation, as long as you have a license to uh, entitlement to it, because um, you pay, you know, you've got the add-on subscription, um, you can have access to curation um, today. Um, next question. Will an organization be allowed to write own custom policies? We've covered, I think we've covered the custom policies. Uh, for example, automated code review tooling, which would be based, for example, on some automated code review tooling. I'm not sure what that means. So it might be like a, a policy as code request, whether we will allow uh, policies to be written as code. Uh, right. We are looking into that. Okay. Uh, there are some uh, extreme measures we need to take in terms of performance, again, to ensure all of that could happen in milliseconds, and that makes it a challenge. So we're looking into that. No decision so far. We will uh, update. Um, next question. We've got six left. Let's see if we can get through these in three minutes. Um, is there a free trial of curation available as part of the current SaaS on AWS and GCP? Um, there is a trial. The way that you can do this is you can request a trial from the website. Um, this will go through um, your account manager if you're a salesperson, if you're already a customer, and it will go through our um, uh, community engagement team if you're a new customer, and we will have someone do you a live demo and show you how to do it in person. So you can get a feel for it, whether you're a new, a new customer or an existing customer. Uh, Daniel, along with also along with false positives, what about CVEs in dispute? So, so CVEs in deep in dispute, you can uh, decide if you want to uh, either block specific uh, or you are allowed those in, uh, knowing that there is a potential that it will be changed, and then once it's changed, X-ray can be the one getting a more flexible decision if this is the case and this is. Uh, what you wish to do. Uh, okay. Also, you can take a look on JFrog uh, severity that is uh, kind of trying to resolve that in some cases. Okay. Um, Daniel's got a great question. Is there a plan to assure or um, see, so you know, you're, you're assured that the artifact files themselves are the correct hash or signature for the metadata claim for it? While the metadata is okay, what if I'm getting tampered files? Yes, so definitely yes. Uh, we are doing this when we are cataloging and scanning pre-scanning. We are keeping the hashes, and this is how we make sure that the file that you are getting from the remote that is trusted and curated are the correct files, uh, not based only on metadata. Okay. Three questions, one minute. Um, can I manage curation from API instead of the UI? You will be able to do that uh, at some point. Policy-wise, uh, waiver uh, earlier. Okay. Um, another question from Mitesh. Can we send the audit data to Splunk or another tool? Um, uh, definitely. We are uh, at, the, at the end of uh, adding those APIs, uh, export to CVSS, and then from there, you can send those to Splunk to CES or whatever, CEF or whatever is the standard. Okay, and final question. Do curation policies for security and license blocks also affect X-Ray, or do we need to uh, assign licenses and secure policies in two places? I think we kind of answered that, which is today you need it in two places, but we're looking at how the two can be aware of each other. Um, but yeah, you would have to have the policies in X-Ray and the policies in, in curation. Okay. Yeah, I'm so no, carry on. Yeah, it's for a good reason, because you still want to put X-ray securing the promotion, securing the bills in case of something change and all of that. So you will always need to put the policies across the lifecycle stages, but the language will be unified. We are working on making sure 
same policies will be able to be implemented in both at the same language. Okay. I'm just looking in the chat and I think all the questions that were in there, there were some notifications about the audio. I think we've covered all of the questions um, that are inside the chat as well. So um, it's one minute after 11. I thank everybody for joining. Um, uh, it was an excellent session, lots of great questions. Um, I think this is the most questions that I've ever seen on a webinar. So I guess uh, the product's very interesting to you and we thank you very much for joining us. Um, please feel free to go to jfrog.com slash curation to find out some more. Um, you, can, you, know, you can get lots of great resources. There's a launch blog. Um, great, just, uh, just go there and find out more and we look forward to seeing you at the next uh, JFrog webinar. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Pleasure. everyone. Thanks for joining.